All right. Thank you very much. So really what he was saying about the tag team is at some point during the service, I'm going to just come out and tag you and then you're up. All right. Holly's down. <laughs> so, hey, that will be fun one day. We will do that maybe sometime. So that's called being in season at all times and it's going to be fun. So you should just be ready. So when I tell you the subject, parables, you might want to study up real fast right now because I'm coming out and I'm going to just tag you, Rick, and get ready. And then you just got to go and bring the word and then you can tag someone else. That's what I think we should do next one. That would be fun. So, hey, so parables and scary and scary. There's lots of fun things to learn about parables. Um, man, there's just a lot going on in parables and we got this nice list from pastor and he said pick one and Gabe says I want this one and I said there's so many how can he already know what he wants and I had to sit and conjure up and think which one do I want to do which one do I want to talk about and so I picked the rich fool and I I hope I put a new spin on it for you guys, and it's not something that you're just used to hearing, but we can bring a new light to uh, the rich fool today, and I hope you can go home with a little nugget uh, of, of something, uh, of what God has for you today. And worship was really cool in talking about uh, raising your hallelujah, because when we're done, um, I hope you learned that the rich fool really just needed to raise his hallelujah. And, and that's what we want today, is to learn how to raise our hallelujah. Parables are teachings. Parables have so much knowledge in them. When it comes to a parable, you're like, okay, is it fun to preach? Sometimes it's like, oh, no, it's more of a teaching. But today... It Let's have some fun with this parable of the rich fool because parables can teach and there's so much to learn in them and dive in. And you can go 500 different directions on what I could say to you today. And if you read the story again after I speak to you today, you could get something totally different. Because as I was studying, I heard people talk about this parable tons of ways. And I even watched some cartoons on YouTube that they do for Sunday school on the foolish uh, rich man and those were fun and I thought about showing them all to you because they made me laugh some of them but today I'm going to talk to you about the rich foolish man but what I really want to do is just dive into Luke 12 is where the rich foolish man is at what I really want you to get from today about the rich foolish man is that we are called to live a life full of joy and a life full of peace. And if you're not full of joy today and you don't have peace in your life, that is what I want you to leave today with. Just understanding that we have been put on here to have a life full of joy, a life full of peace, and God has so much in store for you today. Do you know that the average person spends three and a half hours on their cellular, cellular device doing one thing, searching for their identity? And you're like, I didn't search for my identity today. I didn't do it yesterday. But you did. So often, it, it's a study that has been done that three and a half hours a day, you are spending on your cellular device scrolling, and some of you are, you are doing it right now, scrolling through different ads, scrolling through different social medias, wishing you were somewhere, wishing you had something that someone else had, wishing you could buy something in the target ad, wishing you could do something. Do you know that is you searching for your identity? You're searching for who you want to be, what you want to have. You're searching for something you don't have. 
You're searching through other people's lives to wonder what they have. But do you know, if I took a bite of an apple and took a picture of the nice clean side, you would think that's a beautiful apple. But if there's a mirror behind it, you would see the nice juicy bite that I've taken out of it. And as you search your social media, as you search your target ad, as you search your internet, that's what you're doing is you're searching for the shiny apple that has a bite out of it because you don't know who you are in Jesus. The parable of the rich man is just this. It's the shiny apple on one side and a bite taken out of the other. And he is searching for who he is. But he doesn't understand that he missed everything in not knowing who Jesus was. So if you turn to Luke 12, the parable is there. You'll find many other parables. But as Jesus teaches here in Luke 12, at the beginning, he's, you're going to see he's talking to the disciples. And a crowd starts gathering in. So you guys, you know, you spread out. You got your arm length. And here, these people were rushing to the front. They wanted to be as close as possible. They wanted to know what Jesus was saying. They were pushing people. People were about to be trampled. When Jesus speaks, things happen, and you should listen and get to it. That's a whole nother sermon we're not hitting today, but you can get that just in the first few verses of the crowd coming in. So here Jesus is teaching and he is talking and he is giving some wonderful points. And a man in the crowd stands up and says, excuse me. Jesus is like, dude, I am talking here. This isn't a question answer service. This isn't a, a classroom setting. You just ask me a question. Now, this is not in the Bible. This is me paraphrasing. But I just picture Jesus being like, Tom, sit down. Come on, don't be raising your hand, causing a fuss here. But this dude just stands up and says, Jesus, I have a question. I need you to do something for me. And so Jesus says, yes. What is it? He says, hey, I need you to settle a dispute between me and my brother. He got more inheritance money than me, but I want more. See, back then, if you were the firstborn son, firstborn son, not daughter, firstborn son, you got two-thirds of the inheritance. You got the majority of the inheritance. And then the rest, the brothers, sisters, and everyone else had to split everything. And this guy said, no. I want it. I want more money. And so he just came to Jesus and said, hey. And here we are kicking off in verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Jesus, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? See, I just read it with a little attitude because I can just be like, I can see Jesus being like, what? Why? First, you interrupted me. How rude. And second, this man has an issue of conflict with money and his family. And Jesus is like, hey, we weren't even talking about that. Then, verse 15, then he said to them, watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. 
So Jesus said, hey, listen, I'm not your judge. Yes, I could be. I could be your arbiter. I could be the one who mediates your conflict. But that's not what I want to do today. Because you know what? You're missing the point, sir. You're missing the whole point of why you're here. It's not because of greed, of money, and family dispute. You're here because you don't know the real purpose of your life. And you're searching. And you're trying to fill it with things. See, we all do this to Jesus all the time in our prayer life, in our everyday life, in our scrolling through social media life, and in our life that we consist of every day of searching who we are. We say, God, here I am. So-and-so got the promotion, but I I didn't. Why not? God, hear this. Da 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 And we just keep bringing him complaints upon complaints. And we say, be my judge. Lord, you figure it out for me. I want more. And Jesus said, hold up. You're missing the point. You I have a heart full of greed. But what you really need to be filling your heart full is Jesus. And Jesus says, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and be your judge today. I'm going to sit here and teach you why you need me. Because if you don't understand why you need me, you'll never, ever resolve this conflict with your family. And Jesus started teaching his parable. Jesus does not give an answer to this guy. It's interesting how Jesus talks to him. He says, you know what? I'm not going to give you an answer. This is often how we come to Jesus and Jesus says, hey, I'm going to dismiss really all the details that you just gave me. Why? Because I want to get straight to the symptoms. What are your symptoms? The symptoms of this gentleman here who's complaining is a symptom of greed in the heart. A greed of social media causing him to say, I want more, I want more. This world, we always see the shiny apple and think we're not living up to the best. And we need more. But God says, hold up. You might have an issue, but you know what? Let's not even mess with that. Let's set the details that you're bringing to me aside, and let's get to the symptom of your problem. The symptoms of your problem is a heart issue. See, we live in a world that unfortunately has heart issues. I don't think you heard me. I said we live in a world that has some heart issues. See, all this social issues that we have comes through the root of having heart issues. Because out of the heart flows. And Jesus stops this man and goes straight to the symptoms and says, there's something more. You have a heart issue. He was not coming to Jesus. He was not coming to Jesus to really have Jesus settle his issue. He wanted Jesus to be on his side, to gang up with him. How often do we do this to Jesus? Jesus, I don't really need you to settle it, but I need you to be on my side, not his side. On my side, not the boss's side. On my side, not the church's side. On my side. And Jesus is stopping us. He is straight putting up his hand and says, you are acting like a fool. Yes, Jesus said it, so I can too. How often do we come to Jesus if we keep moving down? Verse 16, and he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. 
Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And then there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. As Jesus teaches us parables, he often is giving us warning signs for our life. First, we have to learn that, that your plan, your plan you are setting forth for your life. Let me tell you, you all better lean in, get your pins ready, get your pins ready, lean in, is about to fail. Your plan is about to fail. That's the first thing we better learn from the rich man. That he, if he would have known his plan to store things up was about to fail, maybe he would have done some things differently. Your plan for your life that you have set forth is about to fail. The rich man did not know that he does not own the rights to his own life. That's the one thing we can never own the rights to, and that's your life. I do not own the rights to my life. Why? Because I did not write the day I was born. I did not write the day I end. That is owned by God himself, and he has wrote that. The two sides are getting this. Let me help you guys out. I said, we do not own the day we are born. We do not own the day we die. That is written by the Lamb of God and it's already dotted down in the book of life. And we can never own the, uh, the rights to our life. The rich, foolish man thought he owned the rights to his life. He thought he had everything. See, this man, he wasn't even rich in terms of what we see as rich. He had it good. And then he had some more. And then he was rich. And so many of us are kind of that same way. We think, oh, okay, I got it good, but I need more. I'm okay, but I need more. And we start trying to jot down the, the rights to our life and say, you know what? I'm going to do this and do this. Now, I'm not saying that you can't save money and you can't plan for your future because the Lord told us to do that. But what I'm saying is you can't be so greedy that you store things up that you forget to be rich in Jesus Christ. How do you become rich in Jesus Christ? Your life is one thing you do not possess. He taught, he had to, he had it all figured out. The rich man thought he had it all figured out. He had the wealth and the crops. He was planning to live and be merry. He was planning his retirement to the fullest. The greatest cartoon I watched was this little old uh, rich man here, and he's, he built a big, what I would call a grain tower that I see in Nebraska. And he was sitting on a throne in the top of his grain tower, just circled by himself, drinking his wine and eating some grapes and then it all fell down and it was just funny to me because it's a kid's story they turned it into but now I picture that as the rich foolish man just sitting in a grain tower an old filthy grain tower thinking he's on top of the world but really his life is about to be turned upside down so many of us don't understand see last week I was sitting in a hot in my doctor's office after 
for a major appointment. And as I look around, I see people and I see myself. And as I walk through the halls, I say, you know what? I don't know why everyone's here, but everyone has a story. Everyone's not written down to live this day. But I am telling you, we don't know the author. We know the author of our story. And we know that he's already got us. But if we put our hope in him and we put our trust in him, that very song we sing, our fear has to leave. Everything has to leave because Jesus Christ is the writer of our life. The rich, foolish man at the end had no one. He sat in his grain tower all by himself. He had no one to help him, no one to share. Why? Because he didn't want anyone. You can store up what you want, but when you go, all your treasures stay. When you go, let, it, let me put it in easier terms. When you die, croak, done, under the ground, your stuff stays here. Your stuff stays here. The rich man thought he owned the possession of his life. And he didn't. The second thing we got to learn right now from this, this parable is we have to store our treasures in heaven, not on earth. We're going to flip over to Luke. I mean, Matthew, let's do Matthew first. Sorry, back there. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. It says, don't store up your treasures here on earth where moth and eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is there, the desires of your heart will be also. The thing we can learn from the rich, foolish man is it's a heart issue. And as he's searching for what he knows, we, God says, I don't need to know these details. Let's get down to the nit and gritty and see that it's a heart issue, a greed issue. He had a greed issue with his family member. What are we searching for? Where you are searching, it shows your heart. Where's your heart leading you? Where's your heart taking you? Are you storing your treasures in heaven? What's that mean, Stephanie? It means that up in heaven there, when you were born, Jesus started a savings account for you. And we start... Building up our bank account by doing things like loving people. Mm. One person got over here. Like loving people, smiling at people, blessing people, helping missionaries, being faithful stewards with our money. This is how we started storing up our treasures in heaven. It's saying, you know what, I'm going to spend some time in prayer because I need my bank account to be full in heaven. Stephanie, I don't get it. It means when you start putting some time on your knees, your bank account starts growing. We work for our money here. Why not put in a little time for our money there? Start praying for people. Start loving on people. Start filling your heart with joy. You know, when you walk into church or work or wherever and you're Krabby Patty, I'm just saying, put a little joy in your step. Jesus gave us another day to breathe. Jesus gave another day. We might have aches and pains and sorrows. 
See, my last week was rather crazy. I went to the doctors myself, and it's a big appointment for me. And then the very next day, we went to a funeral for Mike's uncle. And then I went up to Nebraska for two baby dedications. And I got to see three of my families all come together and sit under one roof, God's roof. And now let me tell you, not all of them love Jesus. But Jesus gave life. And two people said, hey, we're going to have our, raise our family right. So as I went through this crazy week of, of seeing health issues, to seeing death of family come together to, to celebrate a life who loved Jesus, to seeing babies being given back to the Lord. I sat in church last Sunday and said, Jesus, you are so great, and I am so unworthy, but let this be my heart's cry to see the cycle continue to raise praises to you. Our heart needs to be putting banks, putting money in the bank of heaven. We need to check our hearts from greed and, and coventry. We have to love Jesus like we've never loved him before. We have to love people like we've never loved before because they need to know Jesus Christ in this end time. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3, we're going to verse 14 and 15. It says, if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. This has so much greatness. It is time to plan accordingly. We can build all we want, but if we start storing our riches here, we might barely escape. If all of a sudden we just start putting all of our efforts into the world, we might barely escape our call up yonder. We cannot miss our call to heaven. Luke 12, 33, Luke 12, 33, it says, Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses, purses for yourself that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Let me tell you, moths can eat up clothes faster than anything. All of a sudden you put it away. You think, oh, I got a little hole in that. How'd that happen? We have to live a life where we are loving the poor, helping the needy, pouring ourselves out to help the ones around us. Love your brothers and sisters. Help them. Sometimes we come into church, oh, I don't want to be here. I guess I'll just listen to pastor and go home. Pastor, you're going over two minutes. Five minutes, ten minutes. But Jesus is saying, take every time you can. Love on someone. Listen to the word because I need to cleanse that heart once again. Because you live in a world that will corrupt your heart and fill it full of greed. And it will corrupt you to want something else that you do not know. That you will start searching for who you are. And instead of only spending three and a half hours on your cell phone scrolling for who you are, you start 
start spending hours upon hours on your cell phone saying, I wish I was this. I wish I was that. I wish I would have studied this. I wish I would have done that. I wish, I wish, I wish. And all of a sudden, you still don't know who you are. Why? Because you did not listen to the word of God. You did not fill your heart with the word of God. Because when you fill your heart with the word of God, you start pouring your treasures in heaven. You start living your life for a life filled with blessings in heaven. We live in a me society. True riches from, come with kingdom building. I say true riches come with kingdom building. How do you build the kingdom? You start telling people about Jesus Christ. You start spending some time on your knees in prayer. Kingdom building is building the kingdom. Letting people know that they need Jesus. That it's not any other issue. It's not a greed issue. It's nothing. It's a heart issue. And we filled our hearts just like the rich, foolish man with possession possessions here on earth and we filled our hearts so full that we don't even see Jesus anymore mm. next thing follow your money follow the money you want to know who you are follow your money look through your checkbook yes you can look at mine and see that mine will lead you to coffee I love coffee. You will learn that I will buy any Keurig flavor there. Well, no, no flavors, just plain black coffee. Any brand. Mike was teasing me the other day. He said, I bought some Folgers because it was on sale. He said, 1990 called and they want their coffee back. And I said, I don't care, it's coffee. You follow my money, it's going to lead you to coffee. And that's just a, a little side note. But you follow, open your checkbook, see where your money's going. Are you supporting missions? Are you helping kingdom building? Where's your money going? That's going to also tell you who you are, where your heart is. Some of you might be a Big Mac. It's okay. The dudes with food might be barbecue. But let's look into where your money is. See this guy, he said, I have all this money. And if you would have followed his money, all it led was to a single life by himself, a loneliness and greed, setting and thinking he owned everything. But really, he was lonely, hopeless, and just struggling. The man who came to Jesus, he thought he had an issue with money and his family, but really he had a brokenness because he didn't know he needed the fullness of Jesus Christ in his life. Where is your money leading your heart? Are you broken for people? Are you broken for the hurting? Are you broken for the less? Are you broken? See, it's really not that hard to say, you know what? You might not have a lot, but you can still bless someone. You all are eating at your house. You can invite one person over for dinner. There, look, you gave them money because you bought them food. You gave them warmth because you invited them in. Mm. Some of you didn't get that. You don't just have to hand people dollar bills, even though I will accept all dollar bills after service. <laughs> you don't have to just give people dollar bills. You can love them. You can lend a listening ear when they're struggling. When they've lost someone, why not just go sit with them? When they're broken hearted, why not reach out and extend a hug to them? When they're widowed, why not invite them in to enjoy your family? You're giving. You're showing Jesus through your actions.
The rich, foolish man said, I didn't need all that. I own everything. I even own my life. But today, you will not have joy. You will not have peace until you understand that you need Jesus Christ in your life. And you start building a kingdom of God. Treasures plus time equals junk. One person got that. Treasure plus time equals junk. Mike and I have just been moving. Let me tell you, treasures under our stairs plus time, 20 years, equal Dave Dossett and Mike Buckner going to the junkyard. treasures some of you love to go thrift shopping and that was someone else's junk now it's your treasure but how many of you have done this you've went and got a treasure and then you decided oh I don't love this treasure anymore so over time it became junk and you donated it back to the thrift store there's a story of this guy, he went in, it was cold out, so he ran into the thrift store, bought a hat, came out. His wife said, where'd you get that hat? He said, oh, I didn't, couldn't find my ball cap, so I went into the thrift store, got a, a beanie, whatever those are called. And his wife said, I just donated that. <laughs> Treasure plus time equals junk. Where is your treasure stored up here on earth? Because how you store your treasure here on earth plus time equals this I got it. Treasure your treasures, your, your beautiful collection of, of butterflies and frogs and, and whatever plus time does not go to heaven e equals, this side's still struggling. <laughs> Pastor, you might want to move over here. Okay, treasures, youth, come on, youth, come on, youth, pay attention. You're almost there. We're almost to the end. Put your phones away. I need all my youth to help me out. Treasure, hey, come on, girls, let's go. Boys in the back, put your phones away. Let's go. Treasure plus time equals... There we go, there we go, that's what I want. Treasure plus time equals junk. You guys forget I'm a youth pastor, and if you don't answer me, I'm going to just keep repeating it till you get it in, and then you're going to talk about me at lunch because you're going to be like Stephanie said, treasure plus time equals junk about 20,000 times. Listen, my husband does it all the time. It's okay. He says, you know, you said the same phrase about 30,000 times. I said, I know, but no one got it. But listen, you know it now, don't you? So treasure plus time equals junk. This rich, foolish man said, I need all the grain. I need all the riches. And he stored it up. But when God said, your soul is required of you tonight, all of a sudden his riches became junk. In a matter of a blink of an eye, his riches that he had stored up became junk because he stored up riches here on earth and not in heaven. Let me tell you, if you want to fill your life full of joy and peace start building your treasures to build up in heaven because when you build treasures in heaven and time happens you get treasures again not junk folks let me tell you start building your treasures in heaven because God wants you to enjoy them mm. treasures plus time equals junk. How do we get beyond this time? Verse 31, chapter 12 still, it says, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. 
How do you get past the time issue? How do you get past this? You seek his kingdom. How do you build that kingdom? You seek his kingdom. How do you build your bank account? You come and pray sometimes and cry out to him. Instead of interrupting Jesus, you give it to Jesus. When you start giving things to Jesus, let me tell you, your worries go away. How do you live? How should you live? Learning from the rich, foolish man, Jesus said, live, seek the kingdom. This is how you get joy. This is how you get peace in your life. You seek the kingdom and you pursue you per, with a purpose in your life. You live with a purpose in your life to build the kingdom. How should you live? How should you live with a purpose to build the kingdom? Did you wake up this morning and think, today is the day I could lead someone to the Lord? Or did you wake up and think, ugh, it's church. We're human. How can you do this? Take what you have and love others. Bless people. Be kind is the easiest way. The next one, and I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. I hope they're all still here. I don't know if they are. But we sang that song, I Raise a Hallelujah. And in it, it says, in the middle of a storm... I raise a hallelujah. In fear. F Your kingdom treasures grow when you raise your hallelujah. Our worship should be so rich. That our worries decrease to zero. Write this down. Listen closely. This is not a show up here. This is a time when our worship shall increase and our worries shall decrease. Our worship shall be so rich that our worries decrease. Our worship has to be so rich. Who came in here with a worry today? Ooh, two people? Oh, three. Okay, now let's try this again. Who came in here with a worry today? Because I know I did. Some of y'all lying. We are in the house of God. If your life is that good, I, I need to take a lesson. But we all have some type of worry in our life. But when we come to the house of God, when we come to bended knee and we give it to Jesus, we start living a kingdom life and we say, I need to build up my treasure in heaven and I need my worries to decrease. Can you play the, I raise a hallelujah? When we learn that just like the foolish man, we need to focus our worries, our issues on the kingdom, we get joy, we get peace. So to close out today, it's going to be a little different. We'll pray if you need prayer. But I want, to, I want you to learn. Because a parable is about teaching. And Jesus wants you to understand how to get through your fear. Jesus wants you to understand how to break through your worries. Jesus wants you to know how.
how to not fill your heart full of greed. And it can't always be coming to pastor and say, Pastor, I just need your help today. Sometimes we have to battle with our worship. Sometimes we have to buck up and battle for our words. See, I share stories about myself because I know myself. As I go to the doctor, there's always worries. There's always that gut feeling. What will they find? babies being dedicated back to the Lord. As I sat in a funeral last week, as I sat in another funeral a few weeks ago of a young kid, 20, I said, Jesus, fear faces me when I'm in the hospital, when I'm in my doctor's appointments. You can't deal with my fear. My husband can't even deal with my fear. Only me and God can. I don't know what your worry is. I don't know what your struggle is. I don't know what you are doing today. Where your life is at. If you have a family issue, if you're full of greed, if you're full of pride. But today I want to teach you something. If you want joy in your life, if you want happiness in your life, it's time to stand up and raise your hallelujah and sing a little louder because in the middle of the storm, Jesus is still our Jesus and he's here to get you through it. you. I'm not asking you. I invite you. If you would like to, please join. If you don't, that's fine. And raise your hallelujah right now. Because some of you need to fight for something in your life today. Some of you need to get rid of some fear in your life. And it's not about me coming up front and giving it all. It's saying me Jesus, I need to kneel at the altar and say, Jesus, in the middle of my storm, I need you to take away my fear. In the middle of my worries, I need you. And let me tell you, the more you sing, because my heart was filled with fear. And then I got to sing there, and Jesus said, look at those babies, those precious babies. I said, oh, Jesus, I got to fight for my life so I can fight for those life, because I got to build them up to the kingdom. So I invite you. We will be here for prayer, but I first encourage you to fight as you raise your hallelujah.